Welcome to the Big D Breakdown. I am your host, Larry Lease. On today's episode, we're going to dive into the latest off-season news from around AT&T Stadium. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Good Rangers. If you're anything like me, you know that good quality meat makes all the difference in your home-cooked meat meals. And that's why I love Good Rangers. They deliver 100% American premium meat to my doorstep. Since I started using them, my barbecues have gone from great to phenomenal. If you're a foodie or just love a good steak, check out Good Ranchers. It's a game changer for meal times. Just use the link in the description and you can help support the channel. And now on to our first topic. There's a new Jerry Jones documentary that's only going to end poorly for the Cowboys. No one in the world asked for it, but Netflix is reportedly dropping around $50 million to do a docu-series on Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. It's impossible to de- deny that Jerry Jones is one of the most successful men in the entire world. Self-made billionaire, Jones brought the Dallas Cowboys back in 1989 and turned them into the most visible sports franchise in America. We also can't deny that his desire for the spotlight has constantly gotten in the way of his team's successes. His need to prove he's the one pulling the strings and name himself the GM led to the departure of Jimmy Johnson and ended one of the greatest NFL dynasties prematurely. Another not-so-endearing quality Jones possesses is a lack of self-awareness. Not only can this be seen in the fact that he allowed his feud with Johnson to last for more than 30 years, but he continues to climb into the spotlight thinking the world is soaking in his greatness, when really, they're waiting to laugh the next time he says something ridiculous like when he openly pined for a glory hole. True to form, Jones is again putting himself out there, and it will only end in misery for the Cowboys and their fans. Reports have surfaced that Netflix is paying nearly $50 million to do a docuseries on Jones and his football team. And for anyone who thinks this will be a fun look at the franchise, realize the headlines all read Jones first, and then the team, which is exactly the way he wants it. If you don't believe this will be a pro-Jerry propaganda piece, just read the synopsis from the NFL and Skydance Sports, which says the series will show us, quote, The Dallas Cowboys and the journey of Jerry Jones, the club's owner, president, and general manager, in saving and transforming the franchise, leading to a historic set of players and coaches to three NFL titles in the 90s. It's searing its imprint into the global sports business landscape forever. So Jones will show us in great detail how he saved the franchise while allowing us to re- revel in the Print he placed upon the sports back in the 90s when Blockbuster was still a media powerhouse and rotary phones were a thing, but iPhones were not. It's a docu-series no one asked for, but sadly, millions will watch. It just won't be for the reasons Joan thinks. And that's not good for the franchise. And before we move on, give us a thumbs up if you like your videos, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos, and of course, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Just search The Big D Breakdown. Now we're going to dive into the best and worst cases for the Cowboys offensive line for the upcoming season. There's a wide range of outcomes for this very crucial position group. Entering the new season, there are many reasons to be excited about this Dallas Cowboys football team. Two veteran stars have been acquired in Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, and that is raising expectations. The coordinator we love to love, Dan Quinn, is back, and the defense is primed for another big year. And Mike McCarthy is taking over the play calling from the far less popular coordinator, Kellen Moore, in an effort to make the offense a little better. How can you not be stoked about this upcoming season? Well, we're glad you asked, because we like to examine both sides of the coin. We have closed our eyes and imagined the wheels coming off the season. Guess what? It was not pleasant. One thing that could make the things go south in a hurry is a season riddled with problems along the offensive line. This exact thing happened in 2017 when Prescott was running for his life after Tyron Smith got hurt, and the next man up, Chaz Green and then Byron Bell, were dreadful. It was a complete disaster. The Cowboys are no strangers to battling through injuries in recent years as Smith getting hurt has become a regular thing. But to their credit, they've done a much better job building depth over the last few years. This season, there are many question marks on the offensive line, and to be quite honest, how well the group performs could go in several different directions. 
Today, we're going to examine the best and worst case scenarios for the Cowboys offensive line. Best case, the edge holds up. The biggest questions about the offensive line center around what will happen with the team's tackles. Both their projected starters last year, Tyron Smith and Terrence Steele, suffered injuries that uh, sidelined them for several months. Smith missed the first 13 games and returned conveniently when Steele was lost for the season. This season, we will again be holding our breath. While it feels like it's just a matter of time before Smith gets hurt, that won't stop us from crossing our fingers and hoping for a stroke of good luck. Speaking of being healthy, all signs are pointing to Steele being good to go by the start of the season. If he returns to his usual self, this will do wonders in securing the edges. Next up, a left guard emerges. A best-case scenario starts with healthy years by the tackles. It's, that's a gift that keeps on giving because it would allow second-year rising star Tyler Smith to play left guard. Remember, this was the plan for last year, but injuries derailed that early. What if we finally get to see this plan go into effect and Smith mauls people? The Cowboys have no other obvious answer at left guard. It would be great if one of their strongest offensive linemen was able to bully defenders in the trenches. And then we have youngsters on the rise. Continuing with the theme of Tyler Smith dominating, would be watching him put together a breakout season. He played more snaps than anyone on the team last year, and this kid's just getting started. Since 2010, the Cowboys have drafted nine players who have become an All-Pro, and it's only a matter of time before he becomes number 10. And add the continued growth of Steel, another Pro Bowl bid from Tyler, and maybe even a surprise from a player like Matt, or TJ Bass, and things could look awful bright for the future of the offensive line. But, our worst case, they can't stay healthy. Great health is atop the best case list, and it's only fitting that battling injuries would lead, lead things off for the worst case. It all starts with Tyron Smith, whose health trajectory does not look good at all. Just look at his career trimesters. Up until the age of 25, he started 79 of 80 games. Next four seasons, he missed exactly 13 games. Eh, after hitting 30, he's never played in more than 11 games in a season. And that includes two of the last three years, where he's only played two games. 2020, and then four games, 2022. This does not inspire confidence, as we've all conditioned ourselves to just expect him to go down at some point. The saving grace is that we know they have a great reserve in Tyler, if or when that happens. But he's just one person. What if Steele is slow to recover? Knee injuries are brutal. While he doesn't rely on it for bursts and sharp cuts like, say, a Michael Gallup does, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Steele has a slightly down recovery season as well. Father Time is undefeated. Not only is staying healthy important, but so is performing at an expected level. When does the mileage finally catch up with Tyron Smith? We all expect him to be fabulous when he's on the field because he always has been. But players do eventually wear down. It's just the law of nature in the NFL. And it's not just Smith who could slip a bit. Zach Martin will hit 33 years of age midway through the season. Why wait? Expect him to be an awesome... One of his typical all-pro self is downgraded to just solid. Does the Cowboys have enough collective goodness to weather their stars being human and actually showing their age? Next up, the Cowboys could solve the backup running back issue and other problems with this trade. Dallas needs to consider adding this dynamic weapon to their 2023 roster. Although some may be reluctant to give credit to the Dallas Cowboys front office, they had a they have had a terrific offseason. They were able to re-sign critical pieces in their defense by coming in terms with Leighton Vanderish and Donovan Wilson. More importantly, they were able to retain Dan Quinn amidst interest elsewhere to stay in Dallas. The team used the trade route to land receiver Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. They also had a solid draft to fortify their defensive interior and add more speed to one of the fastest defenses in the NFL. All in all, good building blocks en route to a pivotal 2023 season. Yet something feels incomplete. The team made a difficult but necessary decision to release Ezekiel Elliott this offseason, followed by signing Tony Pollard to his franchise tender of $10.1 million. To supplement the position, the Cowboys signed free agent runner Ronald Jones and drafted Deuce Vaughn in the sixth round of April's draft. Still, the team could use another weapon in the backfield. 
the Dallas Cowboys should seriously consider trading with the Atlanta Falcons in exchange for a quarter L. Patterson. Even at 32 years old, Patterson still has a lot to offer. Even in a reduced role last season, Patterson still managed 695 yards for 4.8 yards per carry in only 13 games. Excuse me. Recently, Bleacher Report suggested Patterson should be a trade candidate for the Falcons. Others have already made the Patterson trade to the Cowboys connection, even suggesting throwing in Neville Gallimore in the mix. Patterson has even been considered a possible cap casualty. If the Cowboys were to add Patterson, he could seem- seamlessly fit into their plans offensively. As a runner, he has excellent vision from the backfield and has a knack for squeezing in the tightest creases to find a space in the running game. The pass catcher, Mike McCarthy, could devise several ways to involve him thanks to prior experience as a wide receiver. He's also a good third down running back because he is an adequate pass protector. Furthermore, Patterson is historically one of the finest kick returners to ever play in the NFL. He has also averaged 29.5 yards per return in his career. He has scored kickoff return touchdowns for four different teams, the most recent with the Falcons last season. Patterson could serve as an insurance policy for Tony Pollard if something were to go wrong and also help lighten the load for Javante Turpin if Turpin does take on a more prominent role in the scheme for the Cowboys. As for compensation, how much it would take to acquire Patterson, it would be minimal. The Cowboys trade low draft capital to acquire two starters, Cooks and Gilmore. Undoubtedly, the compensation to acquire Patterson will be even less. Though still productive, Patterson is an older player. The Falcons are running back rich now. Next up, two defensive players that are tabbed for breakout seasons. The Cowboys front seven has plenty of proven talent, but if any of these breakout players become stars, he can be one of the best in the league. I'm going to... For starters, I'm going to have to go with either Sam Williams or Damon Clark. I know, I know, you want me to choose one, so I'll go 51-49 towards Clark, and here's why. I believe Williams has a breakout season that might touch 10 sacks, but I don't know yet how his rep count will look. I know Clark is going to start beside Leighton Vanderish, and he's coming off a full offseason of work with Dan Quinn. Clark is primed to detonate. And next, uh, <clears throat> there's also uh, two other options. Tyler Smith was solid in 2022, but could become a powerhouse in year two. And there's Jalen Tolbert, who basically had a redshirt season. Might he figure out things out now? In between are the likes of Dayron Bland, Damon Clark, Devontae Turpin, Jake Ferguson, and Peyton Hendershot. Each is expected to play a major role. But Sam Williams seems poised to really break out. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Is there something we missed? Something we should have covered? Let us know. And of course, if you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the big D. And of course, give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Subscribe to the channel. That bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next week.